Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. Today we're going to do something different. Yay! You see I'm wearing an apron and that is because we are going to deal with acrylic paint instead of watercolor. And if you get acrylic paint on your clothes and you don't realize it and it dries, it's pretty much impossible to get off. You can get acrylic paint off of your clothes or off of whatever really fast before it's completely dry and set if you use alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Anyway, so here's what we're going to do today. You see the leaf on the uh, left side of the screen. We're going to draw and paint it today. So I'm going to show you, I don't know, Ollie's helping. Um, I'm going to show you what you're going to need to do this. This is, okay, this is not a painting by any artist. I've just come up with this design based on this photo, which I got on Unsplash. I need to do a whole video about these sites. There are certain websites, um, Unsplash and Pexels, both.com, are my favorites where you can get free stock images, which means that you can use the, pay, the, the, the photographs however you want. You don't have to attribute them. You don't have to pay. And legally, they are copyright free. So you can totally use them. This came from Unsplash. A guy named Dan Hamill took this photo, um, which I love. Actually, I'll put the whole photo on the screen for you right now. It's the original is much bigger. I just cut this one little leaf out of it. So we're going to draw and paint this leaf. Here's what you'll need. And this is kind of weird and awkward because of uh, the situation. I guess maybe I need a third webcam for the palette. Anyway, or else maybe I just need to paint flat. I don't like painting acrylic flat. And acrylic really isn't my favorite medium. But you know, acrylic is easy and accessible and opaque, which is why we're doing acrylic for a while. Anyway, so here's what you'll need. Um, you'll need paint, acrylic paint. Um, any kind of acrylic paint will, will really be fine. I have some decent student grade stuff here. Um, you can buy these locally. You don't have to get this kind. You can get the kind from Walmart. Um, I have, the colors I have are titanium white. Make sure you can see it. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, primary red, cadmium red would be ideal, but it didn't come in this little pack of Liquitex Basics, and cadmium yellow medium hue. Those are all the colors I'm going to use to do this. We will mix our green and our orange and that gray brown. Uh, you'll also need paint brushes. I have a few of them here. One really big one, just use what you have, but I have one really big one just to paint the whole background. We're going to do the wood background, but we're simplifying the whole thing. Um, and I have this, which is pretty stiff bristles. I'm going to dry brush some texture on the wood with this. Hopefully it'll work out well. Um, and some smaller brushes for painting the leaf itself. I might pull out some others. I have water um, to put my brushes in. And I have, this is a charcoal pencil. Um, you can totally use like kids chalk. Any kind of chalk will work. This is just for the drawing because we're going to paint the background first and then draw on top of it. Um, you don't have to have this. I mean, it's just easier for me because it's like a pencil, but like Crayola, kids chalk, sidewall chalk, sidewall chalk, whatever you have is great. It works just fine. And it's fantastic with acrylic paint because one nice thing about acrylic is that when it dries, it's waterproof. So you can draw on it with say charcoal and once it's completely dry and then if you don't like paint all over all of it you can just wipe off the char uh wipe off the chalk with um with a damp cloth like and it just comes off it's really great anyway so you'll need that and you'll need some sort of palette i have palette paper 
because I'm not a fan of scraping acrylic paint off of glass, um, paper plates work great too. Also, you'll need something to paint on. This is just an 8x10 canvas panel. You can use canvas, you can use thick paper, like the watercolor paper we were using, that would be fine too. Canvas paper, you can paint acrylic paint on a lot of things because it's essentially glue with dye in it. Um, one good thing to have that is not necessary is uh, gesso. Hope you can, yeah, there it is. Gesso you can get anywhere. They sell gesso at Walmart. And I have this gesso. It's essentially like white matte paint. And it just helps prepare your surface, especially for um, like cheap uh, canvas like this or say paper that isn't made for acrylic like watercolor paper or something it um the the gesso is waterproof and it just it's great for the paint it just makes it much more pleasant to paint on so uh, gesso is fantastic if you don't have gesso you extra don't need it uh, you can totally just do it on paper i'm just a huge fan of gesso and so yay and i remember the very first time i painted i went with my mother to a library program, uh, I think at the David Raiden's branch, many, many years, well, okay, not that many years ago, several years ago. And um, I had to ask, like somebody mentioned gesso and I had to ask what it was. And I remember saying, I was like, what is gesso? And they, she, and the, the library worker then, who I think works for LSUS now, the library worker explained to me what, what gesso was. And I was like, oh, and it wasn't until later that I learned how to really appreciate gesso. I know, I'm sidetracked, but gesso's great. Anyway, so let's get going. The first thing we're gonna do is, I am, um, now my least, the, the main reason I really don't like acrylic paint, I don't generally use it, is that once it's dry, it's dry. And that includes any paint that you have on your palette. Like you can't reuse it, you can't re-wet it. It just dries plastic. And that's why I like watercolor and I like regular gouache that you can re-wet just because it just seems an oil paint I like because it just takes 12 million years to dry not literally but it takes a long time to dry acrylic paint though doesn't but that comes with the advantage of it drying fast so you can just paint over it or correct your mistakes or something like that anyway um, acrylics are pro acrylics and watercolors really are the most practical paints, especially if you're the be a beginner. I started it with acrylics. Anyway, so I am going to put out a little bit of a, of titanium white. Let's see if it'll stick there. I'll put it on here. Let's see, I'm just getting a little bit of it now. So I need titanium titanium white and I'm going to put some of this burnt sienna it's just brown it's a reddish brown you can use any brown please stay there I just want to show a palette and some I'll probably need more of that brown we'll see this is an adventure you see from like the perspective and all that I'm figuring this out as I go and I'm hoping that doesn't, the, the canvas doesn't end up too blown out. We'll work on it. So if it's not great now, we'll get, we'll, we'll get it better. That's way too much blue. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. The background is a very um, gray blue. And so I'm going to show you how to make an amazing color. Let me open my water. Um, the way you can make black, because you see there's no black in here that I'm using and there will be some black in here almost black um, the way that you can make black there are a lot of ways you can make black but my personal favorite way to make black are these two colors mixed you mix blue and brown and you get black you get a really nice black and a much more interesting black really than um, you would otherwise let's see yeah, you can still see that okay so here's how I'm gonna do this okay so I don't I'm going to dampen my brush, okay, just dampen it, it's been sitting there for a while, okay, dampen your brush a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, and I'm going to get brown, actually I'll go ahead, and get all this brown, put it down here, okay, 
and get some blue. I'm going to mix it in just a little at a time until we get kind of a gray color. And then I'm going to get some white and mix that in. Okay, see what I'm doing? I think I'm going to, hmm, it's a little bit more blue in. I'm going to get more brown. Get it a little bit darker. There we go. I'd need more of it anyway. Okay. Add some more brown. Add some more blue. That's a little better. More blue. Okay. So now I'm going to put it on here and see what it looks like. That's pretty good. I'm probably going to have to make more of this, but you see how I did it. It's just brown blue with some white in it. And I am going to paint my whole canvas. This color, if it's like kind of streaky, that's good because that makes, that will make the wood look more interesting. Now the uh, canvas is brown enough for me. Um, I like that it's a little bit streaky and the color is uneven because that makes it look more like wood. And to tell the truth, I had forgotten how hard it is to paint an acrylic. Like just physically demanding, I'd also forgotten how much paint acrylic paint involves. Like just the amount from the tube. Um, I'm going to be having to switch to my big tubes real fast. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move my wet paint out of the way and I'm going to dry this thing really well. My canvas is pretty dry now. So what I'm going to do is somewhere in the ether, there it is. I have my um, chalk. Again, it doesn't need to be in pencil form. It can be kids chalk. It can be whatever you have. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a straight edge. You don't have to use a straight edge. Um, you certainly don't have to use a ruler or a T-square. Anyway, um, you don't have to use a straight edge. And what I'm going to do is about here, I'm just going to draw a line across. Okay, and that's going to be that dark line in the wood. And that's all I'm going to draw right now. I just wanted a somewhat level line for that. So how we're going to do that is we are going to use the same two colors that we used before. We have the brown and the black and I mean the brown and the blue and this time we're going to mix them with a smaller brush to black-ish color. So I'm going to dampen my brush and I'm going to get some blue, more blue than I would think I would need because this is, I mean, more brown than I think I would need because this stuff is ridiculous. Okay. You see how this is turning into a very, very dark color? That's pretty close to black. Still has a bunch of brown, but that's okay. This is actually perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go along this line awkwardish angle. I'm trying to keep it so y'all can see it as best as possible. And I'm just going to paint this across here as straight as I can handle it. If it's not that straight, it doesn't matter that much. Good enough. So now, let's see, I mixed way more of that than I needed. Oh lord, acrylic paint. I see I mixed way more of that than I needed. That's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I have this color and I'm going to get some of it like that. I'm going to get a bit of white in it and I get this grayish color about like that. Okay. And I'm going to 
go along bottom edge with a smaller brush this dampen it just a little bit okay I'm gonna go yeah bottom is lighter I'm gonna go along the bottom edge of this more white there we go and just lighten up this edge And if you're unhappy with part of your white line, you can, this is a perfect time while the dark is still wet, go back and do things like that. Okay, so well, there's my line in the wood. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna use that same color um, and use this brush this brush is completely dry okay completely that's uh, you don't want a wet brush we're going to do what is called dry brushing let me find a piece of paper i just saw some somewhere Here it is. nothing i thrown it away okay so let me show you what we're gonna do just getting a little bit of this like you need a not much paint on your brush. You see how it's streaky? That's what we want. So I'm going to add a little bit more white to that. And it's not even mixed thoroughly. Okay. Make sure. Yeah. Okay very very little paint on your brush in fact it's a good idea to do it on something before you do this and then we're just gonna drag it across and make these streaky lines you yeah, hopefully not like that So I went back and, and went over it a couple more times with a cup with a darker color too. Um, this is streaky good enough. I'm not happy with that, but that is going to be covered over by leaf, so it doesn't matter. And now what we have to do is we have to make sure that this is dry. Now be sure if you're leaving this any time um, at all, like two minutes, uh, be sure and get as much paint off of your brushes as you can. It's not recommended to leave them in the water, but it's safer than leaving paint on them because if the paint dries your, on your brush, your brush will be ruined because it's acrylic paint. So let's dry this and then come back. Actually, this is dry already. So here's what we're gonna do. I have my reference photo, which you might be able to see over here, some of it. And I am going to use this to block in my leaf. Now remember, we can anything that we don't paint over with chalk, we can just wipe the chalk off. So it's not a big deal if you don't end up painting over this whole thing. So I'm just going to mark the top of this leaf. There are other ways you can do this totally too. Um, this is just the way I'm going to do it. Okay. So there's the bottom. The stem comes up about there. And then about here, right, we have it's out, about like that. And then let's see, this comes up. And we're going to refine this before we paint it. up and then this comes down okay let me bring this over farther so we'll say the top is here all right and so this comes down 
there. And this will come down here. And then this come about there. And then this. Okay. We'll say that is generally the shape of our leaf. I'm going to go in a little bit and I'm going to add more details. It's like this. It's not exact. Don't worry about it being exact. Don't try to make it exact. So, like this. This comes out. Okay, at the top, okay, and they're just kind of jagged. Okay, there is general shape. I'm not happy with this. See, if you're not happy with it now, is the easiest time to fix things so you are happy with it better better okay now this part's gonna be probably painted over I just want to show you how these work so I'm just gonna draw a line here for the vein there and then we have one that comes up here and they're not across from each other I forget what the word is for that close to across from each other but they're not so this one's a little bit there and then there's one that comes up to about there and there and there and there and that's what's gonna happen but that's gonna be later okay so make sure let me move this over here now this is one way my perfectionism shows up <laughs> okay there we go so I'm gonna call that good enough I pad back over here and then we're gonna get to painting and the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna make an orange we're going to paint the whole thing orange and then we're going to go back with other colors and put out a good bit of yellow and a good bit of red. You can use an orange if you happen to have one. Ooh, that's a pinky red. We might end up switching there. And dampen your brush a little bit. And I am going to get a bunch of yellow and a bunch of red and mix it until I get an orange I'm happy enough with. That looks good enough. That is a pink, that is not a red. Okay, 
and this will do. And I'm going to paint this whole leaf, not except for the stem. I'm going to paint this whole leaf orange. Actually, I'm going to add a wee, 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 wee bit of white just to help with the opacity of this paint, which I'm not happy with. So, just added, you see, the weeest little bit of white. I just want it to be more opaque. So, let's, let's do this again. Better. Okay. So, let's paint the whole thing orange. Here's our start. Um, it's kind of orange now. What I'm gonna do is, I want it more opaque than that, so I am going to dry it and I'm going to do just another coat of that orange. It doesn't need to be completely opaque, I just want it more opaque than that. That's way better. Okay, so there's our second coat of orange. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do some red. So, to get as much paint off of here as I can, just remember, if you let acrylic paint dry on a paintbrush, that paintbrush will be trash. And you will be unhappy because paintbrushes are not cheap. And even the cheap ones aren't cheap when you have to buy a million of them. So, anyway. So there's the basic shape of our leaf. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some straight up red miso and a small brush and I'm going to paint the stem red. And I'm still going to be adding some to the bottom with that little bit of green and yellow but we'll mess with that later. Um, so, paint off my palette, and next we're gonna do some red, and the way we're gonna do this is we are going to brush it onto parts of our painting. So I'm gonna get my red like this. That is, it's such a pinky red. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange, I mean of uh, yellow into it, just to make it a mar more orangey red. I'm just gonna go into the parts of the leaf that are red. And I'm just going to add this little tint of red on here. And I didn't add any white, so it's going to be pretty transparent. But that is just fine because we got the base to be not transparent. Okay. There's a bunch over here. See how I'm just adding tints of it. Some here, up here. It's kind of going in loosely. Now I'm trying to generally stay in the bounds of the painting. I'm not worried about those yet. That yellow bit where the stem. I mean, where the uh, veins are yet. So, see that? I just made like a reddier red. And in here. And slightly. And this is how, I guess this really is more teaching you how to paint than the watercolor stuff is just copying because there, there's definitely value in copying the masters but we were kind of treating it like um coloring book and that is not what we're doing here and in the kind of the way we're doing this is we are going from general to very specific, and we're not going to go into all of the specifics of this. That would take forever, but we are doing some fun details in here that we would not be getting 
in that watercolor stuff. Okay, so I'm going to call that enough red. I'm going to get all the red off of my brush or all of it I can get off. Okay, and now I'm going to do yellow. So I'm not just going to get yellow, I'm going to get a smaller brush. I'm going to get yellow, I'm going to get a little bit of white because I don't want it to be so transparent. Okay, it's a little bit of white just, just to make it more opaque. I'm going to go in, let's see, here, I'm just going to paint the parts of the leaf that are pretty yellow, and that goes down to this red down here, okay, this tip is yellow. And over here, there's that green. I'm going to go ahead and do all of this yellow because that'll provide an easier way to make that green stand out a minute. And I'm going to paint this on pretty thickly because I want it to, here I want it to cover up the, yellow, the orange for the most part. Okay, there's a little spot right there. And we bit up here. And that's all I'm going to do for the yellow right now. And then into a little bit of this same yellow right here. I'm going to grab some blue in the corner. Please make me a pretty. I think we might have to get a different blue. Yeah. So here's a good time to talk about. I have talked about it a little bit in the watercolor stuff because I mean, really, if you if you notice the colors that I'm using, it's the same. Any basic palette, I need. I should probably do a whole video about it. Um, basic palettes all usually contain about the same colors. I'm looking for right now is a cool blue. Ultramarine is a warm blue. I'm going to go get a cool blue and that'll make a prettier green. Um, I'm going to get phthalo blue. That comes in a lot of um, primary blue actually might work. Um, that comes in a lot of beginner paint sets. We'll try primary blue first. Phthalo blue is my favorite of the cool blues. It's very very greeny blue already. But, um, yeah, this will work. This will work better. Um, mixing it all, it usually works better if you're mixing two colors and the, for one of them to be warm and the other one to be cool and that's mixing two warm colors and it just didn't, I don't, I don't like that green. That looks like an olive green to me and that's not what I'm, that's not what I want here. So I'm going to get some more yellow over here. This is the primary blue. You see how, mu how much brighter this is? I'm going to have to get more white in a second. See how much brighter that is than that? Yeah, it's much better. So, for yellow, that's what we're going for. You see that color? It's still kind of yellowy, but that is way better than that. So, I'm just going to go in and add out here just a little bit of green left. Now, if you'd like me to do a video on like warm and cool colors and mixing them and all of that, put a note in the comments and if you're interested, I will totally do something that's like super nerdy painty stuff. A little bit more white just because I'm trying to make this little part more opaque. Good enough. 
There's our green. We're getting close. Very close. Oh, I forgot one little, one little bit at the bottom. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get more white. If you buy a big tube of anything, make it white because usually that's what you'll use the most of. Also, if you're gonna, if you're using student grade and you want to get one tube of the good stuff, get white, titanium white. White is really the most important okay so I have this mixed I'm not going for lighter so much as more opaque I'm gonna go down here it's the bottom of this and do the bottom I'm gonna make it most of it green after that the green is still wet green like that and remember we'll just be able to wipe up that um, that remaining chalk so now all we really have left we have the little speckles on the leaf but we also have the veins on the leaf the way we're going to do that is I'm going to get yellow and white a lot of white this time my tiniest brush. So I want more yellow. Used to putting brushes in my mouth to hold them, but I'm trying not to do that today. Okay. More yellow. Very transparent yellow. Okay. I don't want these to stand out that much. Dampen your brush a little bit, not much. Okay, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with this line. You see I'm kind of twisting my brush to get a point. Start with this line and go straight down to the stem. Yeah, my red is already dry. I'm not happy with that little mitten, so I want to go and make it less obvious, but my red is dry. Oop. Perils of acrylic paint. Better? Okay, good enough. So, there's the main one. And now I'm going to do, I know we drew, we painted over them, and I'm going to do the others. As good of a point as I can do. Let's see. There's this. Let's start it here. And went. Up there. Just barely see that, that's good. This lands right above it. Okay, and then there's one that comes from here. If your paint's getting gloppy, you can just add a little bit of water to it, not too much, dampen it up a little bit. This will land just above that. And I just get, I just got white all over my arm. That's okay. one right here right 
here. And one up here. Okay, you can add more. There are a bunch of little little veins on there. You can add those if you want. Um, I don't think I'm going to. What I am going to do is extend that one a little bit because that's bothering me. I know. Do it if you're gonna change something. Do yourself a favor and do it while the paint's still wet, so you don't have to mix it again. Anyway, so there's that, and now I'm gonna go and do those dark blotches if you're lucky some of your darkest <laughs> is still wet mine is a little bit okay that's something i'm gonna get some more brown i want it browner than that and if you're really brave you can try spattering it on there i just know i would get it all over the wood and i don't want to do that so I'm also not going to put as many dots on. Remember, if you have to mix this again, all this is is blue and brown. Gloppy, put a little bit of water in it, like not, not a ton. Okay. Roll it a little bit. And then just start putting them ever you want to put them you don't want them all to be the same size or the same shape that's not the way nature works you can put as many or as few as you want i'm just gonna keep going for a little bit Okay, I'm going to call that enough. If you want to add more dots, go to. Actually, I do want to add a couple more. Nothing. I want to add a few up here. Just like that. Okay, um, you can also add more little veins if you want to add more detail. I'm going to call this good enough, though. So... I'm going to do now is on places where I'm 100% sure the paint's dry. I'm going to get a little bit of this water that looks like Yoohoo and wipe off the chalk. I'm going to be very careful around these dots. Not so careful in places like that. You see how the chalk is going, but paint is staying. Definitely don't try this with watercolors or oils or you'll have a bad time. Okay. Hello from the future. Well, kind of future. The, the, I have already washed my brushes and was and, and concluded the video future. Anyway, so I forgot to do a thing on this painting that I wanted to do. And hopefully my paint isn't completely dry. What I want to do is add a shadow. You see how shadow is in that? I want to add a shadow to this. The way I'm going to do that, and I'm going to hope this will last a minute. Some water, not too much. And a little bit more white. You see that? I'm making a color that's darker than that, but not too, too dark. And all I'm going to do carefully the painting is completely dry at this point I go along here and add a subtle shadow over here and that is just me going like this on the side the lights coming down from there this goes out like 
that. See how it makes it look a little bit 3D and better? Let's see. Okay, I'm not being too careful about it or anything. There we go. Then this starts about here. Comes down. Gets closer to it. Go. And this comes down kind of like that. Let's see. Yeah. See why I wanted to come back and do this? This makes it so much better. Okay, and then I'm going to not paint over that. And then come down like that. Okay, much better. See, doesn't that look like a million times better just adding a shadow and making it look a little bit more 3D? Oh, I forgot the stem. We are going to do the stem. Let's see, get more of that color. And the stem comes down. And then just meets it at the tip. on paint okay Oops. much better now back to the actual end of the video and here is our lovely fall leaf painting. So, what do you think? I think mine turned out awesome. Oh, we need to, we have to sign our painting. You can't not sign your painting. I'm just going to use this dark color. I'm going to add a wee bit of white in it. And to sign my name down here. Do not forget to sign your name on your painting because it's awesome because you made it okay there we go I'm pretty happy with this uh, I would like to know what you think if you like this turn of events doing not watercolor for a minute um, next week we will do more art I don't know what it's going to be if there's a traceable there's a link to the traceable um, just like there was uh, for the watercolors there's a link in the description now one thing that you can do with this is um, you can use chalk to transfer the drawing over by tracing on the back of it to your canvas if you don't want to draw it uh, if you want to learn how to do that you can go to YouTube and search for it there are a lot of tutorials teaching you how to do it I might do one at some point um, and that's just transferring an image over so you can paint it uh, or you can just use it as a coloring page too that's cool too so anyway um, oh if and if you paint it along with me please take a picture of it and send it into the library social media we love to see what you do and thank you for joining me I will see you next week for more art club bye